Hi, my name is Aaron Thomas, Marketing Director here at Start.ca. Join with me as the CEO of Start.ca, Mr. Pete Rocca. Pete, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Very good, thank you. We've got a great show for you today. Lots of really great questions. And to get your questions in, always make sure to join our social media channels. You can do that by going to Start.ca, clicking on the Twitter or on the Facebook link at the bottom of the page. Let's start this thing off. We've got a question about the Internet of Things. So Sean writes in and wants to know, is there going to be an impact in terms of the Internet of Things for start.ca? Well, I think uh, Internet Things obviously is um, uh, something that is exposing. It's, 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 everything is becoming connected. I mean, the Internet Things is just a fancy word of saying everything getting connected to the Internet. Is your fridge connected? <laughs> exactly. Your fridge connected, uh, you know, your car, some of the cars, they, they pull into the Wi-Fi and they upload all their information. Um, so basically, it's just you know a lot of connected devices, and a lot of connected devices means uh, people need internet connectivity. Um, those devices don't generally exchange a lot of data, so it, I don't think it's going to drive up the speed requirements uh, for people. But it certainly has an impact in terms of you know making sure that your internet is working and, and the Wi-Fi. Uh, most of these devices are connected by Wi-Fi, so good Wi-Fi is important. Um, so I think we're going to see some of that kind of change. People that you know are investing in higher end routers that have more capacity can handle more uh, devices being connected at the same time. Some of those kind of entry level uh, routers that people might have, uh, they might be good for ten or twenty devices. But it's amazing how quickly those devices add up. By the time you get your uh, smoke detectors and your car and your fridge and your TVs and your set top boxes and everything else. Google Homes, then yeah, you exactly. three or four at home. Yeah. All that's up. And you put them on every floor and. Uh, yeah, so I think those devices are kind of ramping up the, the demands on what people need in terms of the, the equipment for the router. Um, but the, the good thing is there's lots of choices and the prices of those devices are coming down. Good. So equipment, most important thing. And call us up and we'll tell you. We'll kind of lean you in the direction. Hopefully. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We're happy to chat with people about that kind of stuff. Great. We have a question from Susan and it's about streaming and sometimes frozen streams. So she wants to know what is happening when Netflix, YouTube and other streaming sites sometimes get that buffering and freezing if, if they're with start.ca? <laughs> Uh, well, sometimes, uh, quite often, if you're, so if you're talking about, you, you mentioned uh, Netflix and I think you said Google, YouTube, YouTube and stuff, uh, and other sites too. So when it comes to like the big players, uh, Netflix and Google, they have uh, servers or equipment all across uh, the world. It's called Content Distribution Network or CDN. And so those places generally have enough capacity. So if you're having an issue with those types of services, Usually not all the case. I mean, it's not that these these places don't ever have problems, but usually it's in the home. Uh, so it'll either be uh, the Wi-Fi, you know, the router might not be capable uh, of it. There could be um, congestion on the frequency. So the channel that's been selected on the, on the router uh, might have neighbors that are, you know, using the same channel and causing issues. Uh, or sometimes it could be a line condition that comes into the home. So for all of those reasons, uh, those are things that we can help you with. We're, we're happy if you call us up. We can talk to you about your router and help you configure it and uh, look to see whether or not you have uh, a lot of neighbors that are um, you know, maybe on the same frequency. But sometimes it's a little bit different when you talk about other sites. Um, so I'm assuming you're kind of talking about like the, the Cody's um, you know, that might be bringing in uh, streaming from uh, a lot of times like off, off shore or um, from all different sources, whatever it is that people are watching on Cody. And a lot of times when people have buffering or slowness on those channels, uh, I mean, it could be the same things that are impacting uh, your Netflix and Google. So for example, if, if you're having problems with the Cody stream and you're having the same problems with Netflix at the same time, then it's, it's probably uh, not related to either of those sites. It's probably either your internet connection or your Wi-Fi. But if your Netflix is working fine and your Cody's not, um, usually what that is, is is usually on the other side. So whoever's delivering that content, a lot of those sites are either free or really inexpensive and uh, don't have the capacity or uh, connectivity to be able to deliver to all the people that are watching the content at the same time. So a lot of times those buffering issues uh, are a result of 
uh, the far end in that case. And those aren't things that we can we can help you with, uh, but we're, we're happy to talk to you about it. So. And you know, recently you and I were at a conference at the ISP Summit and there was a gentleman from Netflix there and he explained that the first 10 to 15 seconds of a movie that you, you choose to watch, it will be on a lower bit rate. Yes. Until yeah, they true. decide, yeah. until you decide, because the bounce yeah. rate that people will turn off will be at the 15 second mark if they're not interested. And some people may think that the lower bit rate, the quality might be their ISP, but it's not. Yeah, actually, I, I, that was something that uh, w it was great to hear directly from Netflix. And I'm sure we've all experienced, you know, you click on a show and it launches like right away, but it's kind of that fuzzy. And then all of a sudden it's like click and yeah. it's clean, clear, right? Um, but yeah, what that is, is Netflix wants to, the way that, that uh, video streaming works is that you buffer uh, some content. Uh, so that means that you need to download a bunch of stuff before you start watching it to make sure that your internet can keep up with, um, you know, if there's any uh, slight pauses that the video is uh, is clear. So uh, what they do is they they don't want you to wait for that buffering, so they shove a, a, a lesser quality stream down quicker while in the background it's it's buffering up the higher quality stuff. So yeah, the first 10 or 15 seconds can sometimes look a little blurry. Yeah, and it, it's not your ISP, <laughs> it's Netflix. Uh, on to another question we have from Kayla. Um, will you ever branch out your internet services to rural areas? And I know we do have services available in rural areas, so maybe it's the level of service that we have in rural areas. Yeah, so uh, we do offer, um, there's some rural areas that have uh, smaller communities that have access to DSL or cable. Um, and we do have our own, uh, we used to actually do a lot of, of rural connectivity when we have rural wireless. Uh, we found it a challenge to deliver a high quality of service. and. Uh, exited that business, uh, I think it was like three or four years ago now. But uh, with our fiber deployment, you know, we are reaching out to some of those uh, rural communities and uh, even some of the, not necessarily communities, but the rural areas. And we're kind of hoping that, you know, this year we're making huge investments in our fiber team where we've, uh, we're bringing in drill crews and stuff in-house where we used to outsource a lot of that. So we're hoping that, well, we're not hoping, we're expecting that that will, um, really accelerate uh, the ability for us to deliver fiber to more places, but also bring the cost down where, you know, we can uh, afford to, to get some of those lesser dense areas. Great. Uh, my, I love this question over here from Saeed and asking about internet prices. So the question is, will internet prices ever decrease? Yeah, I, I mean, we had a pretty significant decrease in our, in our prices about a year ago, I think. I'm trying to remember the exact date. Um, and basically that came through uh, some changes that happened at the CRTC and how uh, some of the input services that we lease uh, are priced. And uh, we, we took those savings and passed them on to the consumer uh, through lower pricing. I, I think there's going to be, you know, there's really two trends that are happening. One is faster speeds for the same price. And that is certainly a trend that we continue to see and continue to expect. Uh, at the lower end, uh, that's one that's a little more challenging to see how much you know cheaper can it get. But you know, the, I know that the commission is is looking at those inputs to make sure that they're um, uh, they're priced accordingly and uh, enable competition, so that Canadians can can continue to see continue to see um, you know fair and, and affordable prices. So. Uh, there, there is some some pretty significant hearings that are going on uh, that should be wrapping up at the end of the year, and you know we we'll hope to see some real positive um, results out of that. Hmm. Yeah, because the way you, the way you think about it is a lot of independents like us, our prices keep going down, and <laughs> the other way sometimes they keep going up. And people yeah. are people like Saeed are sitting there saying, "Why?" Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's a great a great point. You know, some of some people are. Uh, have recently announced price increases and, and we're trying to keep the prices uh, as low as we can. We do have costs that are continuing to go up, but uh, we're doing our best to keep things inexpensive for people. That's great news. Well, once again, my name is Aaron Thomas, Peter Rocca from Start.ca. And to get your questions heard, visit Start.ca. Go all the way down to the Facebook and Twitter links on the bottom. Make sure you sign up to our social feeds and that's where you can get all your answers, questions that you have for the CEO and for any other question that you have over here for uh, an independent internet service provider in Ontario. Once again, I'm Aaron Thomas, Marketing Director of Start.ca and the CEO of Start.ca, Mr. Peter Rocca. Thanks for joining me. Thanks.